This lesson examines the mean and variance of discrete random variables. A random variable will have numerical outcomes and each outcome will have an associated probability. Our example will be tossing four coins and counting heads. In that case you could have zero heads, one heads, two heads, three heads, or four heads, and each outcome will have an associated probability. Looking at Pascal's triangle we recognize if you flip four coins you could get zero heads one time out of sixteen, one heads four times out of sixteen, two heads six times out of sixteen, three heads four times out of sixteen, four heads one time out of sixteen. So we will use that information to build our random variable. Notice numerical outcomes and each outcome has an associated probability. So that is an example of a discrete random variable. Another example would be to roll two dice. If we roll two dice, we want to find the sum. And we know the sample space goes from 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 6, etc. Looking at the sample space, there it is, from 1, 1 to 6, 6. And if we wanted to go ahead and look at all of our possibilities, you'll notice the sum of 2 shows up here, 1 time out of 36. The sum of 3 shows up here, 2 times out of 36. The sum of 4 shows up here, 3 times out of 36. And to put that entire random variable together, we have these numbers. The numerical outcomes from 2 through 12. 2 shows up 1 time out of 36, 3, 2 out of 36, 4, 3 out of 36. The highest value is 7, which shows up 6 times out of 36. And of course, 12 just shows up 1 time out of 36. So those are examples of two random variables that we can use. The rule is as follows. If we're looking for the mean of a random variable, the mean is simply the sum of the xp. So we have the x column, we have the p column. Multiply those together and take their sum and that will give us the mean. The variance, sigma squared, will be the sum of x minus mu squared times p. And of course the standard deviation sigma would simply be the square root of the variance. So let's go back to our example. We have four coins that we're flipping and we want to find the mean. So my x column, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. My p column, 1 16th, 4 16th, 6 16th, 4 16th, and 1 16th. And to answer this, we are going to go to Excel. So in the x column, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to go ahead and put in our p values. Our first value was 1 16th. Next, next value was 4 sixteenths. Next value was 6 sixteenths. And then 4 sixteenths. And finally 1 sixteenth. So we have our x and our p column. To get the mean we need to multiply those two. Equals x times p. And we're going to add all those other cells the same way. If we add up the sum of those, the sum of the XP column is 2. So our mean in this situation is 2. Now we're also going to ask to find the variance in the standard deviation. So to find the variance, we need the sum of x minus mu squared times p. So you'll notice we've got the table already ready to go. Equals the x value, 0, minus mu, minus 2, squared. So of course, 0 minus 2 squared is 4. We'll autofill the rest of those. And then if we want to take x minus mu squared times p, we've got to take this column, x minus mu squared column, times the p column. So you'll notice 0.0625 times 4 is 0.25, and we will autofill those. But the sum of the x minus mu squared p is the variance. So here we're going to write variance equals, and then we've got to sum up that whole column. So we'll do that. And then the standard deviation is, of course, the square root of that and the square root of 1 is 1. So, continuing, 
we have our sigma squared of 1 and our sigma square root of 1 is 1. We can check that on mini tab. You'll notice I have 1 million numbers in C1. Binomial four trials for flipping a coin four times. Probability of success on a given trial is 0.5. Probability of getting heads on a given trial is 0.5. You want to describe that data set. And you'll notice what I have, I have my mean, my x bar for this a million very close to 2 and my standard deviation for those million data sets very close to 1. So uh, comparing that to our theoretical solution of 2 and 1, we recognize that we are very close. Okay, our next example is to roll two dice. We want to compute the sum. How are we going to find the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation? So again, I would need an x column. I would need a p column, an xp column, x minus mu squared times p, etc. So let's look at our values. Our x column, 2 through 12. 2 shows up one time out of 36, 3, 2 out of 36, 3 out of 36, 4 out of 36, 5 out of 36, 6 out of 36, 5 out of 36, 4 out of 36, 3 out of 36, 2 out of 36, 1 out of 36. So we have our p column, we have our x column. If we multiply x times p, we have our xp column. Add all those together, we get a mean of 7. So it shouldn't surprise us that on average, when you roll two dice, you're going to get an average of 7. Then we need to take 2 minus 7, would be negative 5 squared, 25. So this whole column is x minus mu squared. And then finally, we've got to take x minus mu squared times p. So 25 times 0 0.027778 would be 0 0.69444. There's my x minus mu squared times p column. Adding up all those numbers, we get our variance is 5.833. And the standard deviation is the square root of the variance, which in this case you can see is going to be 2.415. So solving a problem like this is certainly best done using a spreadsheet like Excel. Our theoretical solutions again, mu is 7, variance 5.833, and standard deviation 2.4152. And now we want to check those. So we can use Minitab here a million numbers in C1 and C2. They come from the integer 1 through 6 family, so that's going to be our best way to simulate rolling dice. Adding them together, saying let C3 equal C1 plus C2, we'll get the sum of those two dice, then we'll describe C3. So you'll notice that my x bar here is 6.9987, pretty close to 7. 2.414 is my statistic here for these million data points very close to our theoretical solution that we had on the previous slide. So our theoretical solution again, mean is 7, very close. Sigma 2.4152, very close to the 2.414 that we have there. Okay, our next question examines a carnival game. It's going to cost $3 to play this carnival game. We will spin the spinner. If we land in this region, you're going to collect $1. This region, $2 this region three dollars, this region five dollars. So the probability of landing in one is a half, probability of landing in two is a quarter, probability of landing in three is an eighth, probability of landing in five is an eighth. So from that we can construct a random variable. One, two, three, five, a half, a quarter, an eighth, an eighth. We want to find the mean, variance, and standard deviation for this data set. So again, you'll notice we have the x column, 1, 2, 3, 5. The p column, a half, a quarter, an eighth, an eighth. x times p, 1 times a half is a half. 2 times a quarter is a half. 3 times an eighth is 3 eighths, 0.375. 5 times an eighth is 5 eighths, 0.625. Adding up all those numbers, we get a mean of 2. x minus mu squared, 1019. And then, of course, x minus mu squared times p, 1 times 0 0.5, 0 0.5, etc. Add up all those numbers, add up x minus mu squared times p, we get a variance of 1.75. The standard deviation is the square root of that, 1.32287566. So again, our theoretical solutions, mu is 2 and sigma is 1.3229. We're going to check that on mini tab. put these numbers in C1, 1, 2, 3, 5, and C2, the probabilities, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.125, 0 0.125. The command is random a million C3, discrete C1, C2, describe C3, that will simulate our data. And there you can see our mean 1.997 and our standard deviation of 1.322, very close.